Greetings, Earthlings. Well, I uh, wanted to play with the uh, 68,000 microprocessor, and, and I had bought this old board that I'd pulled some chips off of. Um, 68,000, <clears throat> 10 megahertz, 68,000, 10, and a uh, serial chip, which is a 68681. And then I discovered this thing here, which is a, a Roscoe M68K, which somebody else <coughs> has designed around basically the same parts except different form factors because it's got a 64-pin uh, version of the IC, the, uh, the DIP dual inline, super gigantic. And then, um, and then this is the uh, the UART chip, which uh, what do you call that? A uh, pin grid array or something like that. I don't know. Uh, so basically, basically the, uh, the form factor is reversed for the, for the two chips. Um, but that's okay because it's like somebody else went through the effort of, uh, drawing up the schematics and, you know, uh, making the PC boards and stuff. So saved me some effort, I guess. But now, so I bought it. And it came from England, uh, and so now I'm looking at the board here, and I'm seeing some things, <clears throat> well, that I would have done differently, let's say, that I don't like, that I would have done differently. But um, first thing is, uh, these resistors underneath the processor chip, I would not do that. Okay. Um, there are some layout, <clears throat> some routing issues. Well, here's another thing. The, it's got the rows. Uh, it says rows. Uh, and, you know, maybe this board is lead free, but <clears throat> this thing, when I build it, is not going to be rows compliant. Uh, I'm using leaded solder. Uh, the processor is not rose compliant. Of course, maybe that's why they put those resistors there uh, underneath it, which forces you to put it in a socket so that <laughs> when you go to dispose of it, you're going to pull the chips out of the sockets, and if the sockets are lead-free, then, then maybe it's still rose compliant. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just have issues there. Um, yeah, there are the... There are the chips. Roscoe stands for really old school, I don't know, what the CO, computer or something. Really old school, company, company, computer, whatever. But it's not really old school because, I mean, okay, so is this, is a true 68,000 or 68,010 chip? That's, that's old school. Um, it's using flash for the ROM, which is not exactly old school. It's using programmable logic for the decoding, which is not exactly old school. Uh, although, I guess, you know, d PAL chips. I have some PAL chips from uh, the early 80s. So they did exist, you know. Uh, so I'm not going to ding him for that. Um, the, uh, the goal seems to have been to, uh, have it on the smallest form factor possible. And this is like 100 by 160 millimeters. Um, and then it has an expansion bus header over here, uh, which I believe is unbuffered. So... <clears throat> I don't know how much sense it makes to, to try to make this as small as possible if you're going to have other boards along with it, which might end up having to be larger. Um, what I'd like to see is, <clears throat> what I think I'm going to try to do is design a, uh, a high-res monochrome graphics card. Bit gra a bit a bitmap graphics 800 by 600 graphics card for it 
And then I'll use I'll use uh, stackable headers here, um, so that it, it it's effectively a uh, a three dimensional single board computer. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make a bus. But the other thing I would like to see also is then a uh, let's say an IDE controller, so it can have a display. This this does have a uh, OSPI, I guess. Um, and uh, can interface to an SD card um, right out of the box with the with the firmware that it's got. So you know that's a good thing. But I'd really like to see a real hard drive and probably IDE or parallel ATA is is the easiest to do there. So it does have two serial ports. Unfortunately. Uh, I don't think you can adjust the uh, data rate on those, you know, in hardware. There's no jumpers to set the data rate. So you have a fixed rate of 115.2 kbits, and then they're saying take a uh, get a um, a USB converter, which is again not what I would prefer. I, I would prefer to have an option at least. Uh, oh, because this is TTL out here, um, so you're going to need some converter for it. But I could I could hack up a converter using um, SP3232 to give me RS232 levels. So I'd like a, an option that was say 9600 or 19.2K, so I could connect it to a a, a standard old-fashioned uh, serial terminal. Some other things, just looking at the schematic. Okay, I don't like the way the schematics are drawn up. Um, this is, this is the, uh, the school that just, uh, you know, basically shows, shows the chip and then gives a, a, uh, what do you want to call it, bus value or whatever, and it doesn't show any interconnects of these chips, which I find really annoying, um, because it's just basically... You know, you, you've got to say, well, A, A9, where does that come from? And it goes to a whole bunch of different places. I mean, I, you, you know, it's done with KiCad. It has the ability to show buses and stuff like that. So I would I would have preferred it to be drawn up a different, uh, a different way. But that's just me. Um, you know, had I, had I done it, had I done what I originally intended, then it would have been drawn a different way. Here's the other thing I don't like. <clears throat> and this is just me. Reset circuit uses a 555. I don't use 555s for anything. I uh, There's always a better way if you ask me. Okay. Um, parts. The parts come in three little packages here. And uh, this has the, uh, looks like passive components and some LEDs. What I'm noticing here, which I find odd, the resistors, okay, well, except for that one. The resistors are 5%. These are, uh, I guess, carbon film resistors. It doesn't make any sense these days, in this day and age, to be using 5%. Resistors. I don't even think there's a cost advantage. The last time I looked, they cost more than than metal film, one percent metal film resistors. So I've got, I've got, I think enough <laughs> of the of the metal films that I'm going to use those, um, rather than rather than using these. Not that it makes any difference in the, you know, in the in the grand scheme of things. Those those will work just fine, but you know, um, carbon film resistors have certain characteristics that I don't like. Um, so then we have these other parts. These are like headers and stuff. Now it has this expansion header. Um, well, that's not it. Which I don't think they gave me a uh, a connector for it, unless unless I'm supposed to take two of them and put them together like that. 
Um, but like I said, I use a, a stacking header. Uh, Samtech SSQ. Samtech SSQ-132-04-G-D. Uh, G-D, um, which has a socket and then and then some extended length pins, and so um, you can you can stack things up that way. There's the clock. It's got some uh, electrolytics here. Ooh, low ESR. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Jack Con, never heard of them. And these are Yegios. 85 VC. Well, probably not what I would have used there either. Okay. <clears throat> Integrated circuits. Um, these are the uh, flash memory has them as the uh, firmware in it. Uh, these are the pre-programmed uh, decode chips. They're, they're GAL, GAL chips. Um, what's this one? A 148. Oh, I don't see the 555. Oh, there, there's the 555 right there. Yeah. Um, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, there. Okay. That is, that is, no, that is not what I thought it was. It's not, you see, this has the pins on the bottom. This, this one is a, uh, oh gosh, you know, and what do you call that? I forget what you... <laughs> <laughs> call these, call these packages. I'll I'll put it up on the screen. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So that you know that plugs in there. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, so that's it. I'll get it. I'll get it built, and uh, then I, it looks like I have to order the uh, you know FTDI converter. To uh, to get it to talk to anything, because um, I don't have a I don't have an RS two thirty two terminal that'll run at one hundred and fifteen k bits per second, uh, so I'm probably going USB initially, and then uh, you know it's hackable, so I may want to I may want to change the firmware. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Okay, and so here is what it looks like assembled before the chips get installed. Um, it went together fairly easily. Notice that I uh, I blacked out the uh, rows uh, thing there. Of course, I haven't cleaned this board up yet, and so I'll go over it with some isopropyl alcohol, which will take that off because that's just from a Sharpie marker, but then I'll... Uh, I'll do it again, and then I'll probably lay some uh, capped on tape over it so that no one thinks it's rose compliant. I don't want to want to be uh, accused of false advertising here. Um, <clears throat> okay, couple more issues. Um, the power they have coming in on these on these pins, which I didn't install. I don't I don't really like that. Um, what I generally use, and do I have one handy? I don't know if there's one around here. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Uh, I like to use these connectors um, to bring the power in. Those have a different spacing than uh, than what this is, which is the uh, standard. Uh, uh, 0.1 inches or whatever it is, 2.54 millimeters. Um, the other thing, which you can't see uh, unless you actually look at the uh, look at the, you know bring the bring the PC board layers up into KiCad, is as I mentioned, it's a four-layer board. So you have signals on the top and bottom, and then there's a ground plane and there's a power plane. Well, what they've done is over here, I think, part of the power plane, um, they've routed some signals on it, okay? Um, which I don't like because that means you can't get at those traces. And, and uh, you know, the other thing is 
this is a hobbyist level board, right? It, it's meant to be, it's meant for, for playing and hacking and, and, and whatnot. Um, and sometimes you want to go in there and cut a trace. And that's real hard when the trace is buried, you know, on an inner layer of the board. It's already pretty hard if the traces are this close together uh, <laughs> as, as they are uh, uh, on a lot of this board. But, you know, again, that's just me. So, uh, as I said, I, I, I can't actually try this right now because I have no way to get the serial I.O. on and off the board. I'm going to have to get a uh, get one of those uh, USB adapters before I can before I can actually try it. Plus I have to you know install the chips and without destroying the 64 pin chip which is which is that's going to be the hardest one to to install because well first of all that would have been upside down had I put it that way but uh, there's so many pins it's just so easy to destroy one to bend it underneath and stuff the 8 pin you know that's easy that's that stupid 555 okay um, and the uh, PLCC is is easy enough as well but uh, but a 64 pin dip yikes